Welcome to the National Diabetes Prevention Program New Organization Orientation Webinar presented by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Diabetes Prevention Recognition Program, or DPRP. Benefits of CDC Recognition. There are several benefits associated with being a CDC recognized organization. Recognition is linked to national quality standards and outcomes that prevent or delay type 2 diabetes. Through data submissions, CDC helps monitor an organization's progress. In addition, more and more private and public insurers like Medicare are reimbursing CDC recognized organizations offering this program. CDC recognized organizations have access to technical assistance, training, and resources. And CDC recognition can be an effective outreach tool to encourage referrals. How will an organization be successful? How will an organization be successful in implementing the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program? As a new CDC recognized organization, it is essential that organization staff read and understand the DPRP standards and operating procedures, also referred to as the DPRP standards, completely before starting classes. The organization must have the capacity and commitment to deliver the program for at least one year. This includes at least 16 weekly sessions in the first six months and at least six monthly sessions in the second six months. All organizations should take the organizational capacity assessment found in the appendix of the DPRP standards to identify any areas needing improvement. In addition, Organizations must begin offering the Lifestyle Change Program within six months of the effective date and enroll enough eligible participants to ensure that the minimum participant requirement is met. To fully understand the requirements, organizations should attend webinars, review knowledge articles, and use the other resources found on the National DPP Customer Service Center. Delivery Mode. Organizations have the option of delivering the program using any of four different delivery modes. In-person delivery requires that an organization deliver the program 100% in person by a trained lifestyle coach. This means that participants are physically present in a classroom-like setting. Organizations using in-person delivery that conduct makeup sessions through a different mode are still considered to be delivering the program in person. Online delivery requires that an organization deliver the program 100% online for all participants. This means that participants log into course sessions using a computer, tablet, or smartphone. Online sessions are not necessarily led by a trained lifestyle coach, but live lifestyle coach interaction is required. Online sessions are typically self-paced rather than delivered live. For this reason, the DPRP requires that coaches schedule time with participants for live interaction no less than once per week during the first six months and once per month during the second six months. Emails and text messages can count toward the requirement for live coach interaction if there is bi-directional communication. Organizations that conduct makeup sessions via a delivery mode other than online are still considered to be delivering the program online. Delivery modes part two. Distance learning delivery requires that an organization deliver the program using a remote classroom or through telehealth. This could include conference calls or other video conferencing platforms. In this delivery, the trained lifestyle coach is present in one location and participants call in or video conference from another location. Organizations that conduct makeup sessions via delivery mode other than distance learning are still considered to be delivering the program by distance learning. Finally, 
A combination delivery requires that an organization deliver the program as a combination of any of the previously defined delivery modes at the participant level. In other words, each participant must attend sessions using more than one delivery mode. The in-person and distance learning components must be led by a trained lifestyle coach, and the online components must have live interaction with a trained lifestyle coach. Combination delivery is not an option for organizations that wish to deliver multiple cohorts where each cohort uses a single delivery mode. Please be aware that you must submit a separate application for each delivery mode you wish to offer. Participant eligibility criteria. As participants are enrolled in the program, there are some things to remember about eligibility. The Lifestyle Change Program is a program for adults. Participants must be at least 18 years old. Participants cannot be pregnant at the time of enrollment. Participants must have a body mass index or BMI of at least 25 or at least 23 if the participant is Asian American. Participants must not have a previous diagnosis of type 1 or type 2 diabetes at the time of enrollment. In addition, participants must be eligible based on either a recent blood test indicating a prediabetes diagnosis, a risk test score indicating a high risk for developing type 2 diabetes, or a history of gestational diabetes mellitus, GDM. Medicare beneficiaries participating in the Medicare Diabetes Prevention Program or MDPP, must be eligible based on a recent blood test indicating a prediabetes diagnosis. For CDC recognition purposes, the blood test can be self-reported, but self-reported values are not allowed for MDPP participants. Important things to note once approved. There are a few things to take note of once an application is approved. An organization's approval date is the date the application for CDC recognition was approved. It is not the date the application was submitted. Organizations cannot submit data on participant cohorts that began before the application was approved. Sessions and data collection may begin on or after the approval date, but must begin within six months following the effective date. The effective date is the first day of the month following the approval date and sets the timeline for data submissions. It is also considered the first day of sequence one. The six month periods between data submissions are referred to as sequences. Each organization will submit data once every six months starting from the effective date and have the entire submission month to submit data. The DPRP awards three categories of recognition, pending, preliminary, and full. Pending recognition. Pending recognition is CDC recognition. Organizations do not have to achieve preliminary or full recognition to be considered CDC recognized. CDC pending recognition is given to organizations that meet requirements one through four as outlined in the DPRP standards. These four requirements include the approval of a submitted application for recognition, the indication that an organization is using a CDC approved curriculum, and the agreement to abide by the duration and intensity requirements for the Lifestyle Change Program. Please remember that the duration of the program is 12 months and that the program requires that a minimum of 16 weekly sessions in months one through six and a minimum of six monthly sessions in months seven through 12 be offered. An organization that has been granted pending recognition will be able to remain in pending status indefinitely as long as data submissions are made every six months. During this time, organizations can achieve preliminary or full recognition based on the data that will be submitted every six months. 
To become an MDPP supplier, an organization must have achieved preliminary or full recognition status. Preliminary or full recognition. An organization can remain in preliminary or full recognition status indefinitely if the organization makes all required six month data submissions and reachieves the requirements for preliminary or full recognition within three years of first achieving it, and then at least every three years thereafter, based on data for participants who meet the following criteria. Attend at least eight sessions in the first six months and whose time from first session attended to last session attended was at least nine months. These participants are considered completers and are enrolled in a cohort that held its first session at least one year, but not more than 18 months before the submission due date. This group of participants is referred to as the evaluation cohort. Preliminary recognition. To achieve preliminary recognition, an organization must meet the requirements for pending recognition. In addition, the organization must meet requirement five in the DPRP standards, which specifies that a minimum of five completers must be retained in the evaluation cohort. Full recognition. To achieve full recognition, an organization must meet the requirements for pending and preliminary recognition. In addition, requirements six and seven in the DPRP standards must be met. Requirement six states that organizations must show that at least 60% of all completers in the evaluation cohort reduce their risk of developing type two diabetes by achieving at least one of the following outcomes at least a 5% weight loss 12 months after the cohort began, at least a 4% weight loss combined with at least 150 minutes per week on average of physical activity 12 months after the cohort began, or at least a 0.2% reduction in HbA1c from their baseline measure at the beginning of the program to their final measure taken in months nine through 12 of the program. Requirement seven states that organizations must show that at least 35% of completers in the evaluation cohort are eligible for the year-long lifestyle change program based on either a blood test indicating prediabetes or a history of GDM. Full recognition, criterion for two additional years. Organizations will be granted full plus or an additional two years of full recognition for a total of five years if, at the time full recognition is achieved, the following retention criteria are met for eligible participants in the evaluation cohort. A minimum of 50% retained at the beginning of the fourth month since the cohort completed the first sessions. A minimum of 40% retained at the beginning of the seventh month since the cohorts completed their first sessions. and a minimum of 30% retained at the beginning of the 10th month since the cohorts completed their first sessions. Summary of recognition requirements. This table provides a summary of requirements for each recognition status. Temporary preliminary recognition. If an organization has preliminary or full recognition for one delivery mode, and subsequently applies to deliver the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program through an additional delivery mode, the DPRP will temporarily allow the newly approved organization using this delivery mode to have the status of preliminary recognition. The new org code will only stay in this status until the first evaluation is conducted, which will be no longer than 20 months from the effective date. This evaluation will be conducted only on data submitted for the new delivery mode or code. If the organization is unable to meet the requirements for preliminary or full recognition based on that evaluation, the DPRP will place the new delivery mode or code in pending recognition status. Reporting to the DPRP. All organizations 
must make a data submission every six months according to their data submission schedule. Organizations will receive a report after each data submission. If an evaluation has not been performed, the organization will receive a progress report. If an evaluation has been performed, the organization will receive an evaluation report that includes the results of the evaluation on the completed cohort or cohorts, progress on ongoing participants who begin seven to 12 months before the submission, and progress on new participants who begin one to six months before submission. All reports evaluate program results under the current DPRP standards. DPRP Technical Assistance. Technical assistance is available to all organizations and includes a summary and recommendations section in each progress and evaluation report, scheduled webinars for CDC recognized organizations, the National DPP Customer Service Center, which is an interactive online resource for organizations, and individual outreach by DPRP team members. National DPP Customer Service Center. The National DPP Customer Service Center, or CSC, provides a one-stop shop for resources, training, and technical assistance for CDC-recognized organizations and other national DPP stakeholder groups. The CSC provides support in three main areas, resources for enhanced program delivery, technical assistance support, and a peer-to-peer -peer discussion forum. The CSC resources for enhanced program delivery are hosted in a large repository comprised of frequently asked questions or FAQs, toolkits, training videos, and webinar recordings. To take advantage of the personalized technical assistance support and the peer-to-peer -peer discussion forum, create a profile in the CSC. Thank you. This concludes this presentation. Thank you for your participation in the Diabetes Prevention Recognition Program.